On July 30th, 1943, as World War II raged across Europe, squadron leader Douglas Davy climbed into the cockpit of Britain's second Gloucester E-2839 prototype. This sleek, single-engined aircraft represented Britain's urgent attempt to catch up with German jet technology. Davy's mission was to push this experimental jet to its limits in a high-altitude test flight. As he taxied down the runway, the power jet's W-2B engine roared to life, its distinctive whine echoing across the airfield. This engine, the heart of Britain's jet program, was their answer to the German HE-178, which had already claimed its place in history as the first turbojet to take flight. The E-2839 accelerated rapidly, lifting off smoothly, as Davy pulled back on the control column. As the experimental aircraft climbed steadily, its streamlined fuselage cut through the air with minimal resistance. Davy watched the altimeter climb past 10,000 feet, then 20,000 feet, the thin metal skin of the aircraft growing colder as they ascended. At 30,000 feet, Davy began to put the aircraft through its paces, testing its maneuverability and responsiveness. The E-2839's low-wing monoplane design allowed for exceptional stability, even in the thin air at this altitude. He pushed the throttle forward, feeling the surge of power as the jet engine propelled the aircraft to speeds approaching 500 miles per hour, a testament to how far British engineering had come in such a short time. At 33,000 feet, Davy felt the controls stiffen. The right aileron, crucial for controlling the aircraft's roll, had become stuck. In an instant, the E-2839 began to spiral out of control, its metal frame shuddering under the immense stress. As the aircraft plummeted towards the earth, spinning wildly, Davy fought against the G-forces, threatening to pin him to his seat. The altimeter spun backwards at an alarming rate, while the airspeed indicator climbed dangerously into the red zone. With each passing second, the ground below grew larger. He had only moments to make a critical decision. On August 27, 1939, mere days before the outbreak of World War II, the skies over Rostock, Maria Nea, Germany, witnessed a pivotal moment in aviation history. It was the first flight of the Hinkel HE-178, a sleek and compact aircraft powered by Hans von Ohain's HES-3 turbojet engine that, with the help of Eric Varzitz at the controls, had just heralded the dawn of the jet age. As tensions mounted against the looming Nazi threat, British engineers also raced to master their own jet propulsion technology. At the forefront stood Frank Whittle, a brilliant engineer who had been refining the concept since the early 1930s. Driven by his vision of faster, more powerful aircraft, Whittle established Power Jets Limited. Yet, while the Third Reich quickly embraced the Henkel HE-178, the Brit faced an uphill battle, and financial backing proved difficult as his ambitions were often dismissed as too futuristic. Undeterred by setbacks and skepticism, Power Jets Limited achieved a milestone in early 1937 with the successful operation of their first prototype engine, the Power Jets WU. However, transforming this engine into a viable aircraft demanded more than sheer determination. Development took a leap forward on April 28, 1939, when Whittle met with George Carter, the chief designer at Gloucester Aircraft Company. Unlike many of his contemporaries, Carter immediately recognized the immense potential of jet propulsion. As the two men discussed the technology, they both understood that war was on the horizon and that advanced aircraft would play a crucial role in the coming conflict. As geopolitical tensions escalated, the British government finally took notice of Whittle's project. Now, with the German Luftwaffe growing stronger each day, Britain urgently needed to develop its own jet aircraft. In September 1939, with the world already at war, the Air Ministry finally issued a specification for an aircraft to test Whittle's turbojet engine in flight. Gloucester was entrusted with this critical project, resulting in the E-2839, a designation destined to become synonymous with Britain's entry into the jet age. By February 1940, as the rapidly advancing and nation-crushing conflict intensified across Europe, the Air Ministry signed a contract for two E-2839 prototypes. Construction of the first aircraft began at Gloucester's Brockworth facilities, but the constant threat of German bombers necessitated a move to Cheltenham to ensure the project's safety. The development process 
already ambitious, faced additional challenges as the Battle of Britain unfolded. The continuous drone of Luftwaffe bombers and the pressing need for conventional fighters strained resources and disrupted production schedules. Despite these obstacles, Whittle and Carter worked tirelessly to transform their groundbreaking concept into a functional, flight-worthy machine. Initially, there was some uncertainty about how a jet aircraft might handle in flight. Carter and his team explored different design options, including twin fins for better stability and various jet pipe configurations. Ultimately, they chose a longer fuselage to address concerns about the effects of the jet exhaust, ensuring the design would be both functional and reliable. While the E-2839's primary purpose was to test Whittle's engine in flight, the Air Ministry specification required the aircraft to accommodate two 7.7mm Browning machine guns in each wing. Armament wasn't used for initial trials, but they still had to account for their weight and space for future combat adaptation. Despite Whittle's frustration with production delays, the first prototype was completed in April 1941. As finished, the Gloucester E-2839 was a compact, single-engine aircraft with a low-wing monoplane design. The model was 25 feet 4 inches long, with a wingspan of 29 feet, and stood just under 9 feet tall. This small, streamlined aircraft was optimized for its role as a jet engine testbed. Constructed primarily of metal, though some components, like the control surfaces, were made of wood to save weight. The model's wings were slightly swept back and thicker than those of conventional aircraft to provide the necessary lift at the lower speeds anticipated during early tests. The revolutionary Power Jets W1 turbojet engine was mounted in the fuselage behind the cockpit, with the air intake located in the nose to ensure efficient airflow into the engine. This setup gave the aircraft a round, slightly tubby appearance, typical of early jet designs where the fuselage needed to accommodate new engine technology. The cockpit, though unpressurized and equipped with basic instrumentation, was functional. The E-2839 even featured a tricycle landing gear, quite a modern feature for the time, providing better ground handling and stability. While an experimental aircraft, the E-2839 was just the beginning. The plan was clear. Once it proved its capabilities, the design would evolve into a more advanced twin-engine fighter. On the evening of May 15, 1941, anticipation filled the air at Royal Air Force Base Cranwell. Gloucester's chief test pilot, Philip Edward Gerald Jerry Sayer, prepared to make history with the first flight of Britain's pioneering jet aircraft, the Gloucester E-2839. Weather delays held the team in suspense until 7.40 p.m., when Sayer finally received clearance. He guided the aircraft into position on the long, hard-surfaced runway. With brakes engaged, Sayer advanced the throttle. The engine's pits rose to a deafening roar as it reached 16,000 revolutions per minute. Releasing the brakes, Sayer felt the E-2839 surge forward, gradually picking up speed down the runway. At about 80 miles per hour, after covering 600 to 700 yards, the experienced test pilot sensed the aircraft was ready. Trusting his instincts over pre-calculated speeds, he eased the nose up. The E-2839 responded, lifting smoothly into the air. Climbing steadily to a thousand feet, Sayer retracted the landing gear and continued his ascent at reduced power. That day, the aircraft reached a maximum speed of 240 miles per hour at 4,000 feet, handling precisely as expected and confirming the jet engine's in-flight capabilities. After 17 minutes, a brief but pivotal moment, Sayer brought the E-2839 back to Earth marking Britain's entry into the jet age. While this achievement was monumental for Britain, by the time their newest jet took to the skies in May 1941, the German HE-280 had already flown, making the E-2839 the world's third jet-powered aircraft. Nonetheless, pilot Sayer completed 14 additional successful flights, rigorously testing the aircraft under various conditions. However, Concerns about stress on the cast aluminum compressor case limited maneuvers to 2G forces. The E-2839's testing program continued relentlessly in the following years. Tragically, Sayer disappeared during a flight in a Hawker Typhoon on October 21, 1942, presumed lost in a mid-air collision. 
his colleague, Michael Daunt, took up the mantle, continuing the crucial testing work. On June 24th, 1943, Gloucester test pilot John Grierson pushed the first prototype to new heights. In a grueling 27-minute climb, Grierson took the E-2839 to 41,600 feet, ultimately reaching a maximum altitude of 42,170 feet. This flight marked the completion of Gloucester's testing program, and the aircraft was subsequently entrusted to the Royal Air Force establishment at Farnborough for further evaluation. As the first prototype underwent rigorous testing, a second model was already underway. The second prototype E-2839, equipped with the more advanced Power Jets W-2 engine, joined the test program on March 1, 1943. This aircraft, an improved version of its predecessor, was entrusted to the skilled hands of Gloucester test pilots John Grierson and John Crosby Warren. The testing phase quickly revealed challenges as the jet engine, still a new and somewhat unpredictable technology, exposed issues with oil and lubricants, prompting the team to make necessary adjustments. Despite these setbacks, the prototype was ready for a critical demonstration in April 1943, when the model took to the skies over Hatfield, performing for an audience that included the Prime Minister and key members of the air staff. The demonstration was a success, showcasing the jet's potential to those responsible for Britain's aviation future. By June, the aircraft returned to the factory, where it was fitted with a more powerful W-2B engine. This upgrade pushed the E-2839 to new performance levels, allowing it to reach a top speed of 466 miles per hour. However, with this increase in speed came new challenges. Engineers and pilots had to adapt to the demands of high-speed flight, making necessary modifications to the airframe. Each flight provided valuable insights into the behavior of jet-powered aircraft, as the team learned how to manage the stresses involved in pushing the boundaries of flight. With every hurdle or issue that presented itself, Gloucester's engineers rose to meet these challenges. On one occasion, the E-2839 achieved a speed of 505 miles per hour, climbing beyond 30,000 feet. Reaching Mach 0.74 was a significant achievement for the early jet age, marking the aircraft as a key player in aviation development. However, the pursuit of progress came with many risks. On July 30th, 1943, during a high-altitude test flight, the second prototype was involved in a crash caused by an aileron failure, later traced to the use of incorrect grease in the controls. The malfunction left one aileron stuck, causing the aircraft to spiral out of control. Squadron leader Douglas Davy, the test pilot, managed to bail out from 33,000 feet, suffering frostbite during the descent. The prototype, however, was lost in its entirety. By 1944, the E-2839 had largely fulfilled its experimental role, reaching all its project goals and laying the groundwork for a new era of technology. The Gloucester model proved to be a valuable testbed, demonstrating strong performance with a commendable climb rate and service ceiling. Despite initial considerations that it might evolve into a combat-ready aircraft, the E-2839 was never equipped with the planned armament of four 7.7mm Browning machine guns. Still, the insights gained from the E-2839 program were instrumental in the development of Britain's first operational jet fighter, the Gloucester Meteor. The model, powered by two Rolls-Royce Welland engines, a direct evolution from the Power Jets W-1, became a pivotal asset in the Royal Air Force's arsenal. Reflecting on the significance of the E-2839 decades later, Sir Rafe Robbins, then chairman of Rolls-Royce, highlighted the aircraft's most critical contribution, its engine. Quote, Frank Whittle's pioneering work on the turbojet engine is probably the most important mechanical invention this century. Certainly there can be few, if any, in the world whose lives have not been affected by it. <laughs>